Welcome to Inside Kern. I'm your host, Katie Price. Inside Kern's goal is to help expose the inner workings of Kern County government and how it affects you in your daily life. In this episode, you'll meet the Stanleys, a couple who's concerned about our environment and doing something every day to help it. You'll also get an inside look into Kern County's Animal Control Department from the front lines. Oftentimes, the earliest officer on the scene of a crime doesn't arrive in a car, boat, or motorcycle. Rather, he or she arrives hovering 500 feet in the air, providing a bird's eye view night or day. Their Kern County Sheriff's Air Support Unit started back in 1982. And while criminals and technology have changed, the air unit has adapted and stays true to its mission, busting criminals. Inside Kern is going to take you airborne with an officer in the sky. The air unit has a, pr uh, a variety of missions, um, the uh, most important of which is to support the patrol deputies and officers on the ground uh, doing, conducting patrol missions. Deputy Norm Canby, and I'm a, a deputy pilot with the uh, Sheriff's Department. Um, five days a week, I'm, I'm here flying these uh, airplanes and helicopters for the department. Thank you, Roger. We're clear to Southwest. The patrol flights are manned by uh, deputy pilots. That is, um, actual deputy sheriffs who have come up through the ranks, worked patrol. Uh, get transferred to applying their accepted into the air unit, learn to be pilots. So basically you have a, a, a helicopter flying overhead with a couple of cops in it that have uh, worked on the ground for years. Been here about with the department about 23 years, actually flying about 13 uh, of the 23. That's a, a requirement uh, that we uh, like to have in this unit. Um, we all started out working the jails, working the streets. My name is Kevin Austin. My, my official role here is a tactical flight officer. However, I'm in the midst of uh, training to be uh, one of the pilots as well. When uh, you're breaking up, can you go to uh, admin? Anytime we fly patrol, we're going to have two crew members on board that helicopter. One's going to be the pilot or designated pilot. The other one's going to be designated tactical flight officer. And what the tactical flight officer does is he's using the forward looking infrared camera. He's working the night sun or spotlight. He's communicating with the uh, ground units on calls that we go to. And we're also scanning and listening for other calls and other agencies such as the Pixel Police or CHP. And the RP believes he's possibly emptying an unknown subject's bank account. He appears transient. gratifying to get over over a scene and control that scene, get the units in that you need, and you roll into a scene and you find them and can direct the other officers in and everybody goes home safe, so it's uh, very gratifying.
Sometimes I even feel guilty that I get paid to do it. <laughs> Ever since I was a little kid, uh, I'd, I'd see a, uh, a plane fly over and I'd look at it. But I'd see a helicopter fly over and I would, it'd just stop me in my tracks. I'd sit there and watch it till it went all the way to the ground. So, uh, uh, flying is incredible. Last year, the Kern County Air Support Unit responded to more than 3,500 calls for service. It was involved in 520 arrests and recovered almost a quarter of a million dollars in stolen property. Recycling is something we all think about, but often we can't find the time or energy to do. Our landfills are overcrowded with material that could be recycled every day. In this segment, you'll meet the Stanleys, a young couple who managed to make recycling a part of their everyday lives. I started recycling probably when I was a kid for the first time, but um, my wife and I have really started since we moved into our, our house here uh, about a year ago. Uh, you know, having our own house and being able to take care of our things here has uh, really got us into you know, watching what we throw away. And well, to recycle, we um, keep our bins in our garage mm -hmm. and we keep one in the kitchen, so when we're done with something immediately, we put it there and then. Um, then we sort it out in the garage later. The time that it takes for us to recycle is really minimal. Uh, when we, after, right after we use our stuff, we keep it separated in the house. So we'll keep our plastics, our aluminum, and our cardboard separate. And then to load it up into the car and drive to the recycling place, it just takes about five to 10 minutes. Uh, unload it and back home in less than half an hour. Special Ed program actually collects recycling from around school to um, raise money for their program and so we just keep a box in our classroom one for cans and bottles mostly plastic bottles because that's what they sell at school and then paper and then we put it out once a week and the kids come and collect it and they take it they take the bottles in I guess for for cash <laughs> so that's what we do and the kids are really good about it they don't throw their bottles and stuff in the garbage they always hit it in the recycling bin it's always a, a victory to get them to put their garbage where it belongs in the first place. Um, but to get them to understand the idea that, you know, we can do just a little something by putting it one place rather, as opposed to another and then taking it where, you know, where it belongs um, to kind of help keep their mark on the earth as small as possible, I suppose. Well, I think other ways that we're helping is that, you know, we're able to use our um, our natural resources in a very efficient way. Also with that, that helps the environment because we don't have to 
you know, go through the process of having to make things over and over again from uh, raw materials. We can reuse a lot of the stuff that's already there. Um, and then also being able to preserve our, our dumps so that we don't fill them up with stuff that could be used instead of actual trash. You know, we want to encourage everyone to be extreme recyclers. Get out there and, you know, just take the little extra effort to separate your stuff and go out and recycle it. Find any way you can do it and try to help out a little bit. Absolutely. Benefits everyone. I think being an recy extreme recycler is just uh, being a responsible citizen. Well, my advice for people that don't have the same access as me for recycling is you know, make sure that you're exploring all the different options out there. You can sign up with, if you live in the city, to get a, uh, a city recycling bin. And there are a lot of different recycling areas around there that are within a you know, 10, 15 minute drive. And uh, I would say don't give up on finding those opportunities to recycle. I think they're very convenient. You just have to look around a little bit. Our recycling has contributed, I think, to uh, helping the overall situation that, you know, it takes uh, less energy now to make the products we're recycling so we don't have to go out and extract more oil to make plastics or mine for uh, metals to, to make cans or uh, you know, go through the process to make glass. So I think that we're helping the environment by reducing the amount of uh, new stuff we need to make and keeping stuff out of landfills. So everything we can do to encourage that I think it's going to help us out to help clean the air and uh, keep pollution down overall make things better. Kern County's Waste Management Department has recycling programs for just about every household waste item. If you'd like more information on recycling, you can visit www.co.kern.ca dot us backslash WMD. One of the most controversial items in our news today is what to do with unwanted dogs and cats and how do we stem the growing unwanted pet population. The people dealing with this dilemma on the front lines are Kern County's animal control officers. In an inside look we'll see what it's like dealing with man and his forgotten best friend. Animal Control's mission is to keep the public safe from unsafe and unhealthy animals and to serve as best we can the animals that come into our care here at the shelter. Unsafe animals can be sick animals and they're unsafe because when they're sick they could be aggressive or they could be sick and have uh, diseases that spread to humans which are known as zoonotic illnesses and it, the animals can be dangerous simply because they are aggressive. Uh, how I became an animal control officer was I was working loss prevention for Walmart and a friend of mine was a lieutenant for the city of Bakersfield, the SPCA, doing animal control over there and uh, told me maybe I should come on a ride along and see what I thought of being an animal control officer so I took him up on the opportunity, went on a ride along and loved it. You know, you're out in the field, you know, all day you're working with the public. Um, you're not cooped up in an office behind a desk somewhere, you know. So it, it has, it's, it's a nice job. Mr. Smith has been with the department uh, for several years now. And he works, currently he is working in the northwest part of town. Um, most commonly known as Oildale, the 93308 zip code. I, all of the officers work geographical locations and they rotate on a quarterly basis. This is just his, his uh, short straw this time around. Oildale is, Oildale is a very busy section of the city and so he's hopping all day long every day. Our first call, since we don't really have any major priorities that have to be handled right now, um, We'll do a dangerous order inspection on a dog that was placed on dangerous order. Um, it probably got out and bit somebody pretty severely or has bitten someone or a couple people different times or has gotten out numerous times and maybe killed other animals. Um, so they're placed on um, what the county calls a dangerous order and that's where the dog has to be remain on their property um, behind two locked barriers at all times. The dog is not allowed to go off of its property to the walks. Her walk is not allowed to go 
to the vet. It's not allowed to go anywhere without the Kern County Animal Control's consent. Here will be the house we're going to right here, where the dog crate is out front. Station 95, AC 37. 95. Activity 4797. So obviously the dog's inside the house, the house is locked, so it can't get through that. And then if it does get through the house, then it still has one more locked barrier, which is the front gate and the enclosed yard. That's the second, and then they're required to have a beware of dog sign posted on their property, and they saw the beware of dog sign, so they're in total compliance. Now we're going to go to... Let's do this. North Chester, this is a call for um, an owner's own dog, and the complaint is that the dog does not have any water. Well, while we're driving around, we'll look in the alley here, see if we see the two dogs with no water. Walk up there if I can see two dogs in no the water that way. So this calls for two dogs with no water. Here's the two dogs here out back. The food bowl right there in that bucket, I'm almost 100% sure is full of water. But someone probably walking by, didn't see the water bucket or didn't know there was water in there. So then called in the complaint to us to come investigate and make sure that the two dogs had water out here. Usually someone would be coming out about So you have to go around and walk in the store and see. Hello, how Hi, you doing? Hey, you Hello. Hi. Are you the owner of the dogs out back here? Over here in the back? Yeah, in the back, the two dogs in the in the backyard back there. Yeah. Can can you come out to the back so I can talk to you about them? Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> So, so the dogs? okay. If they don't have a food, they you can't feed them. Because they probably, I mean, we're out. Yeah. So there's, there's water right there. Okay. okay. The the water is in the big gray bucket there. The, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what the complaint was for. Is for the two yeah, dogs not having water. That water is what I got. The door open so they can go in the daytime inside. Okay. They have it right there. You can tell them so they go to the dog. Why do you keep them out back here? Huh? Why, why are they here in the, in the back? How come you don't have them at home? Because that's, this is just for night. Have like oh, so people don't What break about in the licensing? Are they currently for licensed? For the ducks? Yeah. Oh. Do, you, do, you have, do you have proof of the licenses now? I don't have it with me right now. Okay. What, what I'm going to need to do is issue you a fix-it citation just to get your animals licensed. And if you already have them licensed and it's just a fix-it ticket, you just take it down to the courthouse. No problem. And then, and then they'll, um, they'll sign it off for you. Um, do you have a driver's license or ID I can see, please? Uh, I got ID. We can go back okay. over there. Okay. Yeah, if you want to meet me right around the back here at, at my truck, okay, and then I'll, I'll, I'll be waiting for you back here. Okay? So basically what, what happened here was um, we had a complaint for no water. Um, I contacted the owner of the dogs. Uh, he told me that they do have water, and it's in that large gray bucket. So that portion of the, uh, the call was obviously unfounded. The complaint was unfounded. But while I'm out here, um, I'm going to address the licensing issue uh, with him. Um, and that is that the dogs are required by the state of California that every dog over the age of four months be licensed at all times. And you have to have proof of that at all times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue him a fix-it citation to get both the dogs licensed 
um, and he'll have a period of 20 to 30 days, depending on what the court date is today, to go and get them vaccinated for rabies, which you have to have to get a dog licensed, um, buy a license for it, and then take it to the courthouse, um, to the traffic window, um, and show the traffic window the proof that he's gotten the dogs licensed. Um, if he doesn't do that, then he'll have to appear in court and tell a judge why he did or he didn't get the dogs licensed or get an extension on it. So as soon as he comes back with his ID, then I'll be issuing him a, a citation just to get him licensed. What's uh, one of the dog's names? Dog's name is Muzo. One's name is Muzo. Muzo? Muzo. How do you spell that? Muzo. <laughs> M-U-Z-O? Yeah, Muzo. The other one name is Chico. Is Muzo a boy? Yeah, they're both boys. And what did you say the other one's name was? Chico. Chico? Okay. Like I said, we didn't find any violations with the water mm -hmm. or anything. Everything else is okay. We just need to get the dogs licensed. And you have to have proof of that at all times. It's like if a police officer pulls you over and they ask you for your driver's license, you got to have it right there. Okay? okay? Um, so we're just going to do the, the vaccination and license on the two dogs. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and sign here on the X for me. So when you get them licensed, they need a rabies vaccination, a current rabies vaccination, and just buy a license for them. So you can take them to your vet to get that done, to get them a rabies vaccination, or you can come to one of our clinics and I'll give you a clinic schedule. So the next, the next one we'll be having in town will be on the 5th, Saturday the 5th from 9 a.m. to noon at Heritage Park. Heritage Park? Yeah, you can take them up there, and then that way you don't have to pay the, the doctor's visit to take them into the vet. Okay? Right. Alrighty, thanks, sir. Thank you. Nine five for activity four seven eight five. No violations. Dogs had food, water, and shelter. Issued citation for vac and license times two. The officers face challenges with both our, our four-legged customers and our two-legged customers. In the field with the animals, they're faced with strays, and that's not only physically demanding, demanding it's mentally demanding. You know, we, we don't want to be out of a job, of course, but we would like to work our job differently. We would like not to have to pick up strays because the public is not responsible pet owners and keeps the collars on them, gets them microchipped, keeps them in their, in their yard. Uh, when we do pick up the strays, we would like to see the tags and the microchips and friendly dogs and dogs that have been socialized. And that's not often the case. So it's a real challenge to an officer to see the mess that has become of the stray animals primarily because of their human caretakers. One of the people skills you have to have for this job is you have to go from one extreme to another. You have to be able to communicate and cooperate with the people that absolutely hate you and be able to communicate and, and cooperate with the people that love you. And, and that's the thing about this job. You never know who you're going to get or who you're going to run into. Sir. Um, so, just, so, so just so you know, um, anytime the dog leaves your property and you're out walking your dog, has to be on a leash at all times. A that leash. way, a leash. <laughs> that way it doesn't get spooked, run out in the traffic, get bit, you know, or ran over or what have you. Um, and it also needs to have a license with you at all times. A what? A license, a dog license. Where are you, what? You, you know what a dog license is? Yeah. You need to get your, your dog vaccinated for rabies and then buy a license. Oh, he's had all that shit, man. Okay. He got he, all that shit when he got his papers did. Okay. You have to ha you just have to have proof of that when um whenever whenever someone asks Peanut. you for it, okay? Peanut. Hey um 
So I, I'm, I'm going to issue you a fix it citation huh? just to get him licensed, okay? He's been licensed, huh? Okay. Okay, but you don't have proof of that right now. Fuck, babe! I ain't signing this shit, homie. Let me go well, get my old lady. It's her dog. Well, you got me fucked up. Okay. I, I don't like the law. I don't like, you know, oh, you're Okay, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, you know what? You come on, get my old lady, hold, hold, on, hold on a second. Where do you live at? Let me smile. Let me, no, 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 no. Ah. Let me, let me. Hold on a second. Where do you live at? I live right down here, dude. Okay, I'll follow you down to your house. Okay? Obviously, he's a little bit agitated, so we'll follow him down to his house. Maybe there's someone else that'll be a little bit more cooperative than, than him. Everybody around here, they, they let their dogs off the leash and just mm -hmm. walk around with him and everything, and I yeah. figured that'd be okay. So, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. You, you, have, you have an ID? Okay. Your dog leaves your property with you, it has to be on a leash at all times. When you're just walking it down to the mailbox or down to the corner store, it has to be on a leash, okay? So I'm just going to give you a verbal warning on that. Next time, just put the dog on a leash. Okay. I'm going to issue a citation, a fix a citation to get your dog licensed. Okay, and that's the California state law and as well as the Kern County ordinance. Every dog over the age of four months has to be licensed at all times, and you have to have proof of that with you, okay? So what you need to do is you need to get your dog a rabies vaccination, buy a license, take your copy of the citation down to the courts, and they'll sign it off, just like a fix okay. ticket you get on your car, okay? Right. You need to have that done by the 25th okay. of this month. If you don't, then you need to appear in court and just tell the judge whether you, you got it done or not, or if you need to get an extension, there's a phone number on the back, you can call and get an extension on it, okay? okay? Let's go ahead and sign here on the X. Ten twenty three one. You, you, you take the good and the bad, and you try and make something positive out of every situation that you get into. We took a little bit of verbal abuse at the beginning, but I think the uh, end, end outcome was positive in that we educated um, the, the people that we were talking to about the leash laws in California. I think that's the, the positive um, aspect of this. I'm sure we, we could have easily have escalated things into that guy getting really irate and, and more, but calm the situation down, explain to him um, what he was doing and that it wasn't right. We gave him a verbal warning on it and all we're asking them to do is just license their dog. And the next time they bring the dog out, just keep him on a leash. Go we'll check in this uh, trailer park over here at 325 Roberts. I get a lot of calls in there. I'll go check in there and see if anything's not running around. I was just driving by here and I didn't see any water or shelter for the dogs. I wanted to check with you and see if you've, you've got that stuff. Oh, they stay inside. Okay. Where's the, um, where's their water and... Their and water buckets around here, they, but it's not through right now. That's why I come out here for right now and get their water bucket. Set it back up for them. They got water inside. We're right in the middle of moving and shit. Oh, okay. But their water buckets around here. They do take very good care of the dogs. Okay. Don't worry about my dog. Shut up, you guys. What about um? What about their licenses? Where's Where's all their licensing information for them? I got it all. I, man, you know we're right in the middle of moving, man. Okay. If you can just grab that for me, I sure appreciate that. Haven't we Haven't we quarantined these dogs before for a bite? Didn't we? Didn't, didn't, didn't one of them bite one time? Yeah, I took care of it. Okay. Yeah, everything's settled on yeah, that. It's all, it's all taken care of. Okay. Why, did somebody do something? Or? No, I, I just, oh, okay. I want to check on everything, make sure okay. everything's, you know, yeah, we're up to par. Move. Okay. Yeah. When are you moving? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. Yeah, Where are you moving to? Right now, it's up in the air. I don't and know you're going to have all this moved out by tomorrow? Yeah. We got to. Okay. Yep. This is it. Just, just to fix it. Okay. Um, and no just, problem. and just, just for now, on, just make sure when the dogs are outside that they have the food 
water and a shelter. Oh, well, yeah. you don't ha actually have to have the food right then and there because it depends on what time you feed your dogs. You might feed your dogs in the afternoon or in the early morning, but they have to have water and shelter that they can get to. I've been there before, I know how to do it. <laughs> Okay, so then you need to do that by the 25th and take that in. There's that and that. And then if you can, just make sure when the dogs are outside, just make sure we can see some, some, some water visible for them, okay? okay. Yeah, we all have the tags on. Yeah, and keep them on. That, that way. They sit wrestle and they, they pull they them wrestle off. They sit and wrestle and they keep losing them. We've got to keep going and replacing them. Oh. Yeah, so that's they why. They keep wrestling around and, and they lose them. That's why the, the, two, the two females don't even have their collars on, but they, get them, they pull them off and lose their tags. Uh, they've lost, I don't know how many tags already, and we got to keep going to replace them, so I just took the tags off of them. So okay. We're going to have to keep replacing them, but... We'll, keep, we'll keep, them, keep them handy if you're not going to have them on them. Yeah. Well, like that I way, and then that way, too, when they get out, then I know where they belong. Yeah. It's easier for me to bring the dogs back to over here than to take them into the shelter, and then you have to pay all the fees to get them back and all that good stuff. Yeah. Just keep the, keep the collars on them. Okay. Okay? We try to. All righty. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day. Nine five three eight. You know, you can you can arrest someone's husband, wife, daughter, relative, whatever. But you mess with their animal or their dog, and they just they come unglued. And now all of a sudden, you're the bad guy. Nine five. You can generate an activity for a check the welfare for water as well as shelter at Roberts Lane. So when you have to enforce laws, or you have to issue someone a citation for not properly caring for their animal for letting it run loose on the streets, they tend to become very unhappy. And the fact that we're somewhere in between a regular citizen and a full-blown police officer deputy. We don't have that, kind of, that type of respect that a normal police officer or deputy, a lot of people still see us as dog catchers. And so they don't show us the, the respect that we deserve. 10 4 3 your activity number will be 4824. 4824. 10 -4. Kern County's Animal Control Department does more than enforcement and adoption. On any given day, you can find a member of their pet education program teaching children all over Kern County how to respect animals and treat them humanely. If you're interested in finding out more on these segments or any departments within Kern County, go to our website, www.co.kern.ca.us. For myself, the crew, and all of KGov, we hope you've enjoyed this look inside Kern.